Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing today? Excellent. Lovely. Um, I'm trying to see how I feel about what's going on. Why are there like 15 seats right here? I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm going to need y'all to move up. And I'm not going to start until y'all move up. So, you know, it's up to you. If we want to start, we don't want to start. Oh, I know you won't. Don't worry about it. I got you if you do. I got you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Some of you guys are obedient. Some of you guys are not. I will, I will note this. So my name is uh, Dr. Ekwia G. Asari. I am originally from Ghana, West Africa, Black Star Nation, um, the continent. Uh -huh. And I am a psychiatrist by training uh, a healer by birth. So I think that is enough about me. But let's talk about mental health and let's talk about mental illness and let us not be afraid because that is what people are. They are frightened. They are absolutely, completely and totally terrified about mental illness. Why? Well, let's think about it. It wasn't until recently that we even had the ability to look inside the human body. And before we had the ability to look inside the human body, people had hypotheses about what was inside here. And for some cultures, it was even taboo to even cut open a body. So nobody really knew what was happening until we had more of the modern medicine. And we were actually able to open up the body, look at the anatomy, and begin to do research on chemicals and cells and, and receptors and what's going on. And that was when we began to understand that it's not scary what's inside here. But let's pause and think about what's inside here. It is a brain, yes. But it is very difficult to open the brain and see the mind from which we have reasoning, from which we have emotionality, from which our personality kind of just kind of pops out from in some, for some people's perspective. So if you can't really open up a brain and look at the mind and see, okay, my mom, she really likes peanuts. Is that somewhere in here? I don't, no, I don't see that. So we still have a little bit of hesitancy because we can't really see what makes the mind and what makes us. So there's still a little bit of fear because if you can't look in it and you can't see it, then some people can't understand it, one. Two, when we think about mental illness, when we think about mental health, it really is about the totality of who we are, how we think, how we see the world, how we interact with one another, how we perceive the way people are interacting with us. It is all part of our personality and our character and our traits, and it's all one. So when you have a mental illness, it affects all of that. And therefore you feel as if you are losing the integrity of who you are. And that is a frightening, frightening thing. And then your family and your friends who don't really know what's going on are a little scared, don't want to touch it because they're a little scared because then it brings back to their mind what could be happening with them. Could I have this? Well, I kind of act like this sometimes and I don't act like this. And oh my gosh. And they start to pull away and they begin to create a culture of deadly silence where nobody wants to talk about what's really going on. So all of these things now have someone who is experiencing this and they can't turn to anyone because man is a social being and we need people and now we can't turn and we can't touch anybody and what's happening inside us doesn't always make sense so now what we can't find hope inside us and we can't find hope outside us what do we do and the reason why i talk about this is because these are some of the reasons why mental health and mental illness is so difficult to discuss and it is key, it is vital that we understand these basic things, even before we know where it comes from. We need to understand the context we're in. And we need to understand we are warriors for the light. Every single one of you in here is a warrior for the light. And you may not think of yourself as a warrior. But when I say warrior, I mean someone who goes to battle 
and it may not be an actual physical battle. It's not one of these, huzzah! <laughs> you know, it may not be that, but it is battling the silence, the stigma, the pain around mental illness. So do you accept the charge that you are warriors of the light? Yes. Okay, excellent. Now we can really delve in. Bio, psycho, social. Think about these three words. Bio, say with bio. bio. Psycho, bio. Social. social. I am a psychiatrist, meaning I am a medical doctor, but I believe in the lightness of life. So just because I'm light doesn't mean I'm trite. So just want to put that out there because some people might look at me and say, she's a little kind of energetic and wild up there. <laughs> But what I have to say is very serious, and I believe that if it is palatable, it is easier to understand. So bio, the root word, and I love etymology, which means looking at the breaking down of a word to its basics and where it comes from, because it helps you understand the meaning behind it. So when we say bio, we automatically think life. So when we are talking about mental illnesses, what we have is this concept of the biopsychosocial model, meaning that mental illness is a complex thing that comes from the biology of the human, the life, the psycho, meaning the reasoning, the emotional influences, the personality, and the social. The French call it milieu, that is the environment in which a person is in. And I'll briefly go through each of them. Bio life, your genetics. What came through your family from your mother and your father's side? Within this beautiful thing that we call DNA is basically a coding for who we are, how we look, the hair color we have. You may change your hair to blonde, but that's not really the way it was before, you see. <laughs> right? But how we come out when we're birth, that is genetics certain propensities that we have to do certain things, it's all encoded in our DNA, okay? So we have our genetics, but then we also have our birth environment, which is what happened while we were in the process of being molded in our mother's wombs, right? Because there are some situations that can cause stress or some inflammatory responses or perhaps toxins or alcohol and drugs that can affect the birth environment, the womb of the mother, the womb that the mother has for the child. Point, put a quarter in here. Please note, I am not blaming mothers and I am not blaming fathers. I am talking about a complex construct of factors that come together to create something, okay? And I'm just pulling, teasing it apart. So that's an example of the birth environment. For instance, um, some of you may have heard of, I remember in the 80s there was the cocaine crack epidemic that hit our inner cities and also our suburbs, and we had what people called crack babies, which was a horrible term, but that's what was being splattered everywhere. And you had these children who were being born with cocaine dependence, and it came from the environment that was happening as the child was, was basically being formed. So that is an example of how the birth environment can affect the development of a child. Are we okay so far? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Then there's the chemistry. We're talking about, I'll talk about the hormones, and I'm gonna use a big word, neurotransmitters. Neuro meaning having to do with the mind, and transmit meaning sending. So these are hormones that send messages from one place to the other. Just imagine this massive, amazing, wonderful, like highway inside your brain, freeway, and there's all these cars and trucks and trains going back and forth at lightning speed. That's kind of the amazingness of the brain, but I'm gonna pause, because then I'm just gonna go to a, a whole different place altogether. But having hormones, there are certain hormones that basically are centered in certain areas of the brain, and when those hormones come, they're noted for doing something, because everything has a purpose, right? So you have certain hormones, like something called serotonin, which has to, it affects your mood, your appetite, your sleep. So when you have imbalances of these hormones, you end up having what we call symptoms, things that show up, I like the word manifest, that are expressed, if you want to use kind of research terms, within 
that come out. So that's biology. Are we okay with biology? Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to pull a thread. So here's the thread. We have a mother and a father. And the mother's side has genetic history of what we call depression. And the father's side has genetic history of what we call alcoholism or alcohol dependence. And it's always been Uncle Joe likes to drink a little too much. And Auntie Susan always is sad. She's always crying at Hallmark commercials. We don't know why. Okay, and these two individuals meet up in the heyday of the 1960s and they start doing recreational drugs, LSD, marijuana, cocaine, crack, and they're together. And after a few years of doing this, they decide they're going to get married. Keep that in your head. Psycho. Psycho is your reasoning, your emotional influences, your personality. We all know that everyone has certain things about them that they're born with, that you can say, oh, you know Kweku, when he was born, he was always like that. He wouldn't sit still. He was always asking questions. We don't know why. But Ama, Ama doesn't talk, oh, she sits in the room and reads her book. We don't know. So there are certain things that happen that we just kind of have within us. And that's what we call our personality. Some people are more impulsive. Some people tend to be more irritable. There are some people they say are Pollyannas. They were kind of born happy. They're always up, you know, optimistic. And it's not a challenge, it's an opportunity. And you're like, listen, it's a challenge, it's a difficulty. I don't want it. This is your opportunity I don't like, <laughs> right? So we know that we have certain things about us that kind of, they seem to kind of come. And then we have the moods and we have how we reason. Because there are some people who they think, for them, the world is just hard. And so when you talk to them, they always kind of like, I know, but what are you going to do? It's just hard being an immigrant, being black. And there's some people like, I know it's hard, but we can do something about it. There's how you are seeing the world, how you learn to see the world, what was kind of inside of you. Not, not just the genetics, but the way your mind absorbs the world and the messages. We all have very unique ways of doing that. And there are coping mechanisms that some of us have, coping styles. Some people are out there and they're running. They feel upset. They feel mad. They feel sad. They go and start running. They go and exercise. Some people, they want to be quiet and they cook or they write. There are different ways that people have learned to cope with what's happening around them, what's happening inside them. And that is the part that we call the psycho. Now let's go back to our thread. Mom and dad. We had alcoholism and depression. They were using drugs. They get married and they have kids. They have four kids. The first child is the son, you know, I'm the son and everything seems to be okay and I'm out there doing what I'm supposed to do. The second one is a little bit wild, another son all over the place. And the third is a baby girl who seems to be rather quiet. She kind of stays to herself. And because her parents are busy with the two rambunctious sons, and she seems to be quiet and doesn't seem to bother anyone, her parents don't really give her a lot of attention, per se. They don't go and they say, how are you? How you doing? Is everything okay? It is kind of, she's fine. She's, she's all right. She's good. But she starts to feel isolated in her own little understanding of the world. The mommy and daddy are always busy with my older brothers, but I'm kind of here. And she's already kind of quiet, so she doesn't really say that she wishes they would spend time with her. And she starts reading books. She starts kind of doing her own thing. And she's doing her own thing, but she's not too, too happy about it. So she just lives. Psycho. Social, meaning your environment, 
the people around you, what your culture says, what your culture believes, what your family says, what your family believes, what your family doesn't actually say but really says. We all have those understood rules about the way things happen, like the father always gets the big piece of meat. Now this is something I never really understood, right? At least, from the, at least from on the continent. Because think about it, you have already grown. You are as tall as you're going to be. Why do you need the meat? This small child who has not quite grown up is getting the chicken foot. I'm confused. But it's because he's the father. And in a patriarchal society, in a patrilineal society, the father is everything. And so he must get the best. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you've eaten enough meat in your life. This one hasn't. So give that one the ch at least the drum. Why are you fighting over the foot? This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, what your, your culture says about the way you should live, what, your, what you know the culture says, even without being told, also affects who you are and how you deal with things and how you see things. Let's go back to our thread. So we have this girl, and now she goes to school, and she's very quiet, and she does well, but she gets bullied at school, and she can't really talk about it. And then one day, her parents get a phone call. And the phone call is that they saw some, some scratches, some marks right here. And it looked like she was cutting herself. And the parents are like, cutting? What? And they rush to the school, and all, everything's going on, and the girl is just, she, she's crying. She, she's just, I'm, I, I'm sad. I'm just always sad, and I don't know why I'm always sad. And, and, and I just, and then she kind of shuts up. She can't really talk. She can't really speak the issue. And she comes, she gets evaluated, and her parents hear that she has major depressive disorder. She's depressed. And they're like, Wait, I mean, I've been depressed before. No, 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 this is different. Well, I don't, I don't get it. What I want you to do with this example is I want you to think about everything I said about the biopsychosocial. And I hope you can begin to understand how this complex construct developed end up with a child who has depression. This is not every child's story. This is not any particular child's story. I wanted to bring together some commonalities for you to understand where it is and how mental illness is de develops. So the biology of it, where did the, and I, I, we have, I think we have a little time, but where did the biology of it come from for this young girl? And I said it, and anybody, anybody can say it. Just throw it out there. Her mom didn't have depression. It was in the family, right? But you're, you're on it. You're, you're right there. The mom had it. In the, there was a genetic coding for it, right? So she's been cutting. And then they also discover that she's been taking some of the pills that dad has for his ankle. Where is that coming from? What specifically, though? Because the kids didn't see the, they didn't see the parents do drugs. But what did I tell you before? What did the father's family have? Alcoholism. Alcoholism. So there was a history in the genes of substance abuse. So it was almost encoded through that genetics for that propensity towards using substances to help cope or deal. Okay, and when we talk about genetics, it's not just what comes through the system. It's also something we call, there are de novo mutations. Break it down to of, new, de, of, novo, new, the Greek, meaning something new. Sometimes you can have genetic mutations that did not come through the line. They just happen, okay? So, and then the psycho, where's the psycho part of it? her personality, her reasoning. Where did that come from? Culture. Mm, no, no, not necessarily. That's, that's social, right? It can be a little difficult to tease, but the psycho is the individual. Hmm? Attachment. What does that mean for the people who? The connection between the parents and the 
the child and the ability for the child to thrive and to be attuned by. So children usually grow up in the relationship. So when you see a baby, what do you do? You hug him, right? It's or you smile. So they respond to that. You smile to them, they smile back. They cry. What do you do? You pick them up. When you don't pick them up, what happens to them? They cry and cry until they stop crying because no one picks them up. Something happens to us when this happens. So that's part of it, right? Is it, and that speaks more to the social, but the psycho was that she was already kind of a quiet girl. Right? She already was to herself, already more introverted, already not prone to talk about the stuff that was going on in her life, already kind of thinking, well, my parents don't really, so I'm just, she was not the kind of girl that was going to get up and say, you know, mom and dad, you need to give me some time. That was part of her personal way of dealing and looking at life. And of course, the social we've talked about. Now, all of these together, create what is called a perfect storm for someone to develop a mental illness. And there are tons and tons of examples, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I just wanted to give you a kind of a bird's eye view of the biopsychosocial model and theory of mental illness. That it is, again, a complex construct of different factors that come together. Someone may get mental illness. That same per another person in the same situation may not. So we have to be very careful when we look at mental illness and look at it in an individual perspective of an individual person within a larger context and beginning to understand where that person is coming from as we are warriors of the light.